Hello and welcome back to my channel. In this session, we will look at the part two of your 10 common uh, AWS EC2 interview questions. So once again, EC2 is one of the very important uh, service that we have in AWS. And uh, this is one of the very commonly used service that we have in AWS. Um, so in the last session, we looked at the part one of your 10 common uh, AWS interview questions where, where we discussed 10 um, uh, interview questions with answers related to your EC2 service. Now in this session, we will look at the next 10 uh, common interview questions that you can expect uh, when it comes to the EC2 service. Once again, before we start off with the session, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. So the first question that you can expect here is, what is the difference between on-demand instances, reserved instances and spot instances? Now on-demand, reserved and spot instances, these are the different pricing models that we have in your EC2 instances. So you can expect a question around uh, these three uh, instance uh, pricing models asking what is the difference between them. So your on-demand instances, it follows your pay-as-you-go models. So you're only going to pay for what you're going to use. And under this, you will not have any upfront commitment or any contract period. So under this, you will either pay by the second or by the hour, depending on the instances that you're going to use. So it follows your pay-as-you-go uh, model. You're only going to pay for the instances that you are going to run, maybe for an hour or 30 minutes or 10 minutes, whatever it is. Then you have the reserved instances. Now under the reserved instances, you'll have to get into a contract. So you'll either need to purchase a one year contract or a three year contract. And uh, it's a commitment basically under your reserved instances. However, this offers you a significant cost savings when compared to your on-demand instances. All right, so you can go up to 70% of discount when compared to your on-demand instances if you are going with the reserved instances. The only thing is under this, you'll have to get into a contract of either one year or three year period. Then you have the spot instances. Now spot instances, uh, these are simply your instances with variable pricing depending on the supply and uh, demand. So these are simply your spare EC2 instances which are available and Amazon gives you uh, uh, gives these instances at a very huge discount but it all comes down to the supply and demand all right so whatever you're looking for if the supply is there you will have the instances if not you will not have those instances so you know under this you'll have a variable pricing and it will all come down to your supply and demand and these are suitable for workloads that can handle interruptions unlike your on-demand instances or reserved instances uh, your spot instances there are chances that your instances will get interrupted if the supply is no longer available. So these are the differences between your on-demand instances, reserved instances and spot instances. The next question you can expect is how can you move an EC2 instance from one region to another region? So let's say, uh, for example, you have an instance running in the US East 1 region, all right? So, and there's an EBS volume associated with that. Now, the ask is that how can I move this instance from, let's say, US East 1 region to US West 1 region or any other region. Now, there's no direct way to move an instance between uh, two regions. However, there is a workaround that you can do with this. So, what you'll have to do is you'll have to manually create a new instance in a different region. So, let's say US East 2. So, you'll have to go ahead and launch a new instance in that particular region. And then you can replicate this data whatever the data we have the EBS volume we have we can copy that data over to the new region and reconfigure the settings to the EC2 instances all right so it's a workaround that you have there's no direct way that can be done to move your instance from one region to another region the next question you can expect is what is an instance profile and how is it used now instance profile is um, uh, comes into the picture when you're working with your IAM role so it is simply a container for your IAM role that can be used to pass all the role, the IAM role related information to your EC2 instance at launch as to um, which role to attach, what are the permissions to be uh, associated, all that information will be available in your instance profile. So this allows the instances to have all the necessary accesses um, securely. So let's say your instance needs access to the S3 bucket or it needs access to your Lambda functions or any other service we make use of your IAM role for that. And whenever we make use of your IAM role, we are utilizing the IAM profile to provide all the necessary information about that role. The next question you can expect is, can you change the instance type of a running EC2 instance? 
um, you can change the instance type of uh, uh, instance that is running. However, you cannot uh, change the instance type on the fly. You will need to stop the instance and only then you can change the instance type. So before you change the instance type, you will need to stop that instance. Now you can either make use of your AWS console, the CLI commands or your SDKs. So uh, the st step one will be to stop the EC2 instance. Then you can change the instance type and then start the instance once again. Only then it will uh, reflect the changes. You cannot change the instance type on the fly meaning you cannot change the instance type when the instance is in the running status you will need to stop the instance only then you can change the instance type the next question you can expect is explain the concept of your ebs snapshots so ebs snapshots these are nothing but these are simply taking backups of your ebs volume so it's a uh, ebs snapshot it's a point in time copy of your ebs volume so whenever you want to take a backup of your data uh, you make use of your EBS snapshots for that. So it can, we can make use of your EBS snapshots to create a backup of your data, migrate the data between two regions or restoring the data by creating new volumes. All those things can be done by your EBS snapshot. So the uh, earlier we discussed one question about replicating your EC2 instance between two regions. Now we make use of your snapshots for that. So what we do is uh, the EBS volume in one region, we take a snapshot of that and then we restore that snapshot in a different region. Wherever you want to replicate that uh, instance, we restore the snapshot in that region, which is creating a new EBS volume. So basically, whenever we are talking about data backup, um, uh, um, migrating the data from one region to another region, we can make use of your EBS snapshots for that. The next question you can expect here is, how can you ensure the high availability for your EC2 instances? So how do I make my EC2 instances highly available? Now, the first thing that you can do with this is you can deploy your instances across multiple availability zones. So if you have multiple EC2 instances that are running, it is always recommended to run these instances in different, different availability zones. So generally it is recommended to have one instance in one availability zone. So let's say you have three instances. So it is recommended to run this across three availability zones. So that's your step one. Then you can have these instances running behind a load balancer, right? like an application load balancer or a network load balancer to distribute the traffic among these three instances. And that way your instances will be highly available. Your application will be highly available and your application will be able to handle the load, the user load. Right. The next question you can expect is what is the difference between an instance store volume and EBS volume? So these are the two types of volumes that we have in EC2. So your instance store, it is local and it is used to store your data temporarily. So it's a temporary storage that is physically attached to the host machine. Now, what that means is your data is available as long as the instance is running. If you stop the instance or if you terminate the instance, the data will be lost under your instance store volume. So the data is available as long as the instance is running. That's why it is used for your temporary storage. The EBS volumes, on the other hand, it's a network attached storage that provides durable and resizable block level storage. So under this, your data is persistent. It does not depend on the state of your EC2 instance. Whether your instance is running or not, your data would be available for you. Your data will be persistent for you. So your instance to volumes is used for temporary data where the data is available as long as the instance is running and your EBS volume is used for your persistent data which does not depend on the state of your EC2 instance. The next question you can expect is what is the role of the user data property when launching an EC2 instance? Now, at any point, if you have a boot up script that needs to be executed, we can make use of your user data for that. So user data, it is a way for us to pass a script that can be executed when the EC2 instance is being launched. Maybe you want to start some service, you want to install some packages when the instance is launching. We can make use of your user data for that. So we can use this to automate your tasks such as 
configuring the EC2 instances or installing some applications or uh, software setup for any of those purpose we can make use of your user data so we can use it as a boot up script uh, configuring the instance installing some softwares or setting up your applications we can make use of your user data property for that the next question you can expect is can you share an ami with other aws accounts so by default when we whenever we create a custom ami it is private only you can use it however if you want to share it with other aws accounts we can do that also so you can share an ami with specific aws accounts either by um, making it public now if you're making it public anyone with an aws account can access it you can make it private where you can choose which aws account can access those amis and you can also make use of your aws organizations to share your amis with other aws accounts so it is possible um, however you'll need to change the permissions of your amis you will need to choose which aws accounts can access your amis and likewise you can share your AMIs with other accounts. So this is the next uh, part two of your uh, 10 common AWS EC2 interview questions. That's all for this session. In the next session, we will look at your part three, where uh, we'll discuss about the last 10 common uh, interview questions as part of your EC2 service. That's all for this session. Thank you. Once again, before you leave, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you like the video, leave a like and please share the video.